different? Yeah. For a number of reasons. Um, I don't see the point in making the same album again. To, to do Fever again would, I think, be far more um, astonishing than making an album that's different. So it's a question that I always find a bit strange because it stands to reason that I would want to move on. Mm. Um, and if you look at the history of, at least with, with my albums with Parlophone, with the last three albums since the comeback, <laughs> the first one reclaimed pop, the second one was Fever, which was very heavy dance electro. And then we just kept the electro influence, definitely, electro beats, maybe slowed them down a bit, made them a bit more feminine in some areas, a bit more um, sensual. Yeah. And, uh, and I think it worked. I think it, I found it really easy to record and a joy to record, to, to experiment with so many different vocal deliveries. And uh, I guess it's a good sign if it, if it happens fairly swiftly mm. and smoothly. So, um, that's um, the best I can. <laughs> yeah, totally. We worked with... Um, 50-50, some producers I'd worked with before, some I hadn't, and some, as you say, bedroom producers, like Baby Ash, who has been working for, for a while, but this would be his first step into the commercial world of music. Um, and yeah, they come with fresh ideas and, and a fresh interpretation of, of what Kylie, what they think mm -hmm. Kylie should be on a record. Uh, so there's, there's advantages either way. Those whom I've worked with before, know how I work, what I like, what I don't like, and we can take off where we left off. And the new ones just come in, like they've got nothing to lose, so they go, what do you think of this? And inevitably I said, yeah, cool, let's do it. My A&R mm -hmm. department, two guys, who I have a lot to thank them for, because really it's, it starts with the music. And we, can, we can decorate it with costumes, lights, images, blah, blah, we can enhance what's already there, but the most important place to start with is the song. So I've got a really good team and they would probably have to field, I don't even know how many songs they have to listen to and just go, no, 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 no. But aside from that, they have to think, they, they, they have a role like, like a producer of a film, I think, so they have to say, well, Okay, let's put it with this writer or this producer. Just cut it down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not for slow. That I mean, does a lot of poolside photography. Mm -hmm. Strong women, slightly decadent. Um, so that was was one of our references. Injecting a bit of colour to help my new photograph. <laughs> um. uh, I heard slow as an unfinished song. And I just, I mean, I don't know how to explain something like that. I just responded to it. I just thought, that's for me, I have to do that song. And there's other songs that I'll hear that, that I think are great, but I, I could equally imagine someone else performing the song, but slow, I just, mm. I, I probably listened to it three times in a row and um, thinking of visuals and I mean it just got me dreaming and thinking how can I perform it vocally and visually so uh, that has to be a sign. Mm. Clearly we were heavily influenced by Bridget Butler uh, for the album shoot and that, that followed on into the, the first single and the promotion for the first single. I think it helps to be quite cohesive with all the, the various forms of connection with the audience. Um, and I honestly don't know how my creative director and I stumbled across Brigitte Bardot. I don't know if it was something in the air. There seemed to be a lot of, I mean, after we'd made that decision, we realised, oh, everything in fashion is black and white and there's 60s go-go everywhere. Um, so partly it's probably just, you know, what's in the air for people. But once we'd decided to take a lot of inspiration from Brigitte Bardot, we researched it further and he was on eBay finding obscure magazines and memorabilia and all kinds of things. Um, 
to try to get not only the look, but that kind of that period when she worked for Serge Gainsbourg that was really, she mm. was purely coquette, but then she molded, uh, blended with him to, to have a bit of rock and roll influence. Mm. And there's some great TV show uh, footage that she did in the 60s. It's just, it's bonkers, it's so out there. So it was more 60s Brigitte Bardot than 50s, but we just thought it was a fun image to play with. Yeah, it's a bit Jane Fonda Barbarella also, which of course I did, God, how many years ago now? 94, nearly 10 years ago, with Put Yourself in My Place. I mean, female icons, I've been influenced by them since the very beginning. Um, Madonna, you look at all of her imagery and she's, we're all at it. And I don't think there's any shame in that. It's just, it's like an homage to these incredible women, or at least the vision that they presented. Mm. Oh, no, it isn't. Absolutely not. That's no. the point. We, we tried to move away from... Um, I mean, I generally try to do something that's A, different for me, B, different from what you're, gonna, well, from what you're seeing currently, mm. seeing or hearing currently. It's incredible that, that how few people would comment that about the song Slow. Already Slow, I'm, I'm amazed every time I hear it on the radio, which might be a weird thing for me to say, but it is so different. Uh, I knew it at the time when I decided to go for it as the first single. Yeah, it's, a, it's kind of a brave move mm. in this world of pop music. Um, so we did something very different then, and equally with the the image, I wanted to do something different. And I, I just, I've made all those videos before and I wasn't prepared to, to push it any further. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, I think it's quite, not shocking, I mean, that's, that's not the word I'm looking for, but, you know, it is a, a really, it's a sharp turn to do something different. If I didn't have to explain myself about my, my choice for how to present myself these days, I, I think that it would be, People wouldn't be going, oh, what's she done? It's this, it's still a very contemporary, sexy, fun mm. image, but it's just the, a little less revealing than I've done in the past. <laughs> or perhaps there's perhaps there's a change, you know, that I'm I'm part of society as a whole as well, and even when we don't realise we're, we're having these influences or some kind of collective thought happening. Um, you know, perhaps we are about to sway away from what we've been doing for the last five years or so. Well, well yeah, it's, and, it's, and I don't want to be bored myself, and I don't want to bore people, so it stands to reason to do something different. Mm -hmm. Oh, for me, it's essential. I mean, sometimes you laugh or you cry, so I prefer to laugh. And I'm, I, I just have a strong sense of humour. And sometimes we present that in, in a, a really subtle way, you, you would hardly... I mean, even the video of spinning around, I mean, we were pretty much having a laugh with that, and that it kind of transforms my career, but we didn't really know what to do in the video, so we said, mm, hot pants and a wink. <laughs> yeah. And there you go. So, And I think people can, whether they're aware of it or not, they, they understand quite a lot about my personality. And I don't... I mean, take... I work seriously, but I like to have a laugh with it as well. Mm. Yeah, there's, no, there's always, I mean, the, the phones at my management's office get requests upon requests upon requests to do, you know, to help out for all kinds of things. And it's really hard to say no. Um, sometimes I do have to say no because I can't mm. be there. Um, so I try to help out when I can. Yeah. Um, and I'm actively involved in a couple of children's organisations in Australia and the UK. So I'm trying to do my bit. That's quite good. Yeah. Um, do you think people rather listen to you because you're famous? And do you try to...? Um, you have a platform, mm -hmm. at the very least. Um, and if I could, could compare that to to try trying to get a start in in a business, I'm just talking about my business because that's what I know about. To, to you might have 
fantastic voice, great song. You don't have the platform for anyone to hear them, to sign you, to release you, to buy your records. You, you kind of walking around in circles. So at least I have, I have a voice. People, I, I have people's attention. It might not be the case forever, but I do for now. And um, yeah, so so it's a it's a very good means of getting the message across. I think this album has a different life. It's like a different child. They're not going to be carbon copies of each other, brother and sister. Um, I normally, England and Australia being my strongest markets, that's the first place I look to see how the album's done. And it's done really well in both places. And at this time of year, to bore you with all this kind of information, but to release at this time of year, I'm competing against REM's greatest hits, Michael Jackson's greatest hits, REM, blah, 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 blah. You know, you're really, you be like, mm. hey, you notice me, I'm here. But Christmas. it's Christmas time, but I didn't want to wait till next year. I felt this album was, was, um, was ready, ready to come out now. And if that meant a lower chart position because of pre-Christmas uh, record market, so mm. be it. But I think it's everyone's having to get used to the fact and kind of tell ourselves that it's a different album and it's going to have a different, maybe different longevity, which would end up making it a more successful album than my last one. It was interesting. <laughs> it was a lot of work for one show, um, almost as much work as, as putting on a full scale tour. So it was normally my tour was two hours long and this was about an hour fifteen. Um, and just from a personal perspective, to to be performing songs that I've never performed live before it was a little bit stressful, a little bit exciting. Uh, and at the end of the show, I just didn't, I just didn't know what to think. I was like, what? And even th through that week. I'd look around at the at my team, we all worked on the show, and we'd just say, what did we just do? Did we really just do a show? It was a slightly surreal experience, but it's what I wanted to do, and uh, fortunately I was able to do it. I mean, money can't buy, it was cold, but it cost a fortune <laughs> to yeah. put on. Yeah. Uh, but I had an incredible response from the audience, and we had 40 countries represented, people that came to the show. So it was a really, really big night, and I think just when there's that much pressure for one night, I think I just kind of get more and more into myself and have this, I don't mean to sound too, um, too out there, but it's like, it's an experience that, you know, I'm not, I'm not as relaxed as I am here with you. I was just like, okay, focus, focus get through it, make it as good as you can. So it was a bit surreal afterwards. <coughs> um, and of course, we don't like to do anything we've done before. I mean, I've seen people touring, you know, a year later and it's basically the same tour. We just think, wow, they're either really smart or, or people are going to get bored soon. Maybe that works for them as an artist, but for me, even if it's, it's if I'm doing a, a re, like GAY in London, really small, hot, sweaty gig, mm. and they've seen me time and time again, and I really don't have to do anything, I just turn up and say hello. But no, we have to go and give ourselves stress and trauma and headache beforehand, saying, okay, what can we do this time? And, you know, it's, it's for, for ideas of how to present single, a video or a show, it's not an unlimited resource and sometimes we find that you know, we're a bit drained and say, well, what can we do this time? I don't know. But we normally pull something out. In my head, yes, I'm planning a tour, but um, I just, I haven't agreed to, I haven't locked in the dates. Yeah. And as soon as tours mentioned, I think, well, what was first being mentioned, when we started doing promo for, for the album, I just went, <gasps> oh. and then I start to think about it, and I just get so excited and reminiscing about all the good times on tour. You know, you forget about how 
arduous it was at some times. Um, so yeah, it's looking likely. <laughs> they just have to pin me down and say, say yes. <laughs> so we can book the venues. Mm -hmm. But, but it, is the, it is the place where everything makes sense. Where, where I understand why, you know, I travel around and it's been 36 hours traveling to do five minutes on a TV show. That kind of thing can be, I understand it's part of the job, but it, it isn't very, very rewarding. And once you get your audience in a venue and everyone's excited and they're giving me energy and I'm giving them energy and there's, you know, it's it's an honest reaction and that's, it's, it's pure. It is pure because they're, they're not there in any other form. They just, they pay for their ticket, except for the money can't buy show. <laughs> <laughs> pay for the ticket, made arrangements, everyone's putting energy before they even get there. Um, and I think in a cosmic way that, that we've had a lot of shared experiences, even though we've never met. You know, they might have had remembered their first kiss or breaking up with a boyfriend. I mean, I don't know all kinds of experiences that I've somehow been there, you know, whether it was just remembering a song or something mm. like that. So it's pretty special when we all get together. Totally. Yeah. Oh yeah. I don't I couldn't tell you what I believe because I don't I don't know how to put it into words, but I, I believe in universal power and just, I think, we know that much. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think, I think it is universal, mm. even though it can sometimes lead to harsh and damaging situations. I think its fundamentals are, are, are love. And not that I've had anyone say this to me for a while, but Every now and then there's someone saying, oh, pop music, it's just about you know, making up and breaking up. And, but, you know, so were some of the greatest works of art, or operas, or, or... I mean, you walk through, through the museum and a lot of what you see is about the same things pop songs are about. Well, Not always, but some of them. <laughs> and I, I guess I use that story because when I was about 14 I used to nag and nag my parents to take me to Pony Club which was like an hour away. Um, well firstly I nagged them to actually have a horse but that was never ever ever going to happen. And my, my parents tell the story of you know, alright darling off you go, bye, be careful, yeah, and, and you, you leave all the group of kids on their horses and ponies, you leave pretty Gently, well, and the horses just want to charge home, so inevitably I was up the front on the smallest horse. Yeah. <laughs> My parents are just, oh no. So I, I feel a bit like that myself sometimes. I'm, you know, I'm the smallest person around, and and I, I can be very fragile sometimes, but I, do, I think I have a strong constitution, mm -hmm. and I, I don't like to, I don't like to give in. There's a lot of, of the real Kylie in that, well, not Kylie, but the persona I, I've become. Um, I guess the important thing is that there's, there's a lot that's in that, but there's, a, there's so much that isn't, and it just doesn't belong in, in a public arena. Um, We're not talking about Bridget Jones, Day. <laughs> <laughs> Dear diary. Oh. I, stopped, I tried a couple of times and I just failed miserably. Why? Because the trouble is, I, I read back what I'd written and I hated it. I'm mean, talking years and years ago. I just thought, oh. <laughs> hmm. You find it all over again. Um. But I, my best way of, of just. Of, I mean, I could just be saying that to you, but my way of proving that it isn't is I don't think I have, would have the tenacity and, and the patience to be delivering a lie to you for 15 years. I just don't think you can do that. Um, so much of every day, so many days of the week, so many weeks of the year. And for me, when I perform or do what I do, it's, it's kind of an example. 
exaggerated version of, of one part.